What's up, guys? Jared Lopes back here with you. Super excited to be with you. I want to thank our sponsors for today's episode, Skylight Frames. Skylight Frames is a digital photo frame that can be updated by email anywhere in the world. Go to skylightframe.com. Use the promo code TIRED, T-I-R-E-D, to get $10 off your purchase. Today's episode is also sponsored by Songfinch. Every special occasion needs a soundtrack, which is why Songfinch takes all your stories and favorite memories and crafts them into a one-of-a-kind song that makes a timeless gift. Go to songfinch.com, use the promo code TIRED to get $20 off your song from scratch. Welcome back to the uh, longtime listeners of the Dad Tire Podcast. Super glad to have you guys here. Uh, thanks for, so much for hanging out every week and learning what it means to fall in love with Jesus, help your family do the same. If you're brand new, we'd love to hang out with you, get to know you. You can uh, come hang out with us by going to dadtire.com, click the community tab, and that will link you over to a closed group that we have on Facebook. With thousands of guys from around the world who are falling in love with Jesus, helping their families do the same. Um, also, if you haven't signed up for the cruise, you definitely should. Spots are filling up for that. Would really love to hang out with you in tropical weather, which sounds really nice right now as the whole southern, eastern half of the country is getting blasted by snow and a snowstorm, um, which I'm slightly jealous of because I'm in Portland. It's just cold and rainy and drizzly, but we can't like go outside and have fun like the rest of you can. I hope all of you stay safe and hopefully just have a bunch of fun playing in the snow with your kids. Um, anyway, what was Oh, cruise. Yeah. <laughs> The opposite of that, the opposite of a snowstorm is being on a cruise ship in Tropical Island. So sign up for that. We're going to do a marriage cruise um, and have a marriage conference on the cruise. It's going to be really, really fun. And we're going to talk about what it looks like to have a really intentional marriage and family plan for raising disciples, falling in love with each other, all that good stuff. It's going to be great. Go to dadtire.com forward slash cruise, click the cruise button and sign up for that before spots fill up. Um, today, uh, before we dive into today's episode, we're going to be talking about um, prayer and how prayer points your family to a better God. I'll explain what that means in just a second, but I do want to thank Songfinch for sponsoring this episode. Songfinch is a company that makes customized songs for you and for special occasions for your loved ones. They really are one of uh, the coolest gifts that you can give to someone that you love. So uh, they put together a song for my kids, I, I, they ask a bunch of questions like what your kids are into, what you guys, what you like doing for me in particular, I was talking about my kids. So I talked about their nicknames, what we do for fun. We, we, um, go play basketball games and go on bike rides and all that. And then they send it off to one of their song writers. They've got over 300 songwriters in their community. You can even tell them what kind of style you like. They take about a week, uh, or less to put together a customized song for you and then send it back, put it in your dashboard. You can listen to the song read the lyrics, read about the songwriter. Um, it really is such a really, really cool gift to give. So this is perfect for like an anniversary, for grandparents, for your wife, for your kids. Uh, I'm going to play a little snippet of their song for you, but go to songfinch.com, use the promo code TIRED, and you'll actually get $20 off your song from scratch. Take a listen to the song they wrote for me. I love everything about each of you. Never forget how proud I am when I look at all of the things you do. Lie, lie, a googie mama, a baby sea star. You have given my life purpose to live in service and follow my heart. May you all. So when I, uh, when I asked the wives on Instagram, the wives that follow along on Instagram, and uh, we, we also have a closed married group on Facebook where there are couples from the dad tire community that can just go and process things together on that group. If you're not part of that super good group to be part of, you just type in dad tired or the group is actually called tired and true. So if you just search that on Facebook, you can come to that closed married group, what we have there. But whenever I ask the wives in either of those communities, what is one way that your husband can lead you well spiritually? What's one thing you wish your husband would do to lead you well spiritually? Without question, the number one answer that always comes up as the number one thing that wives say they want their husbands to pray with them as the wife and their kids. 
Um, without question, it's always the number one thing that comes up. Wives desperately want their husbands to pray for them, with them, and with their kids, and uh, and pray together as a family, which is really fascinating. Um, that it's really such a simple thing, <laughs> like it's not that uh, crazy difficult of a thing, and, and yet it's the number one thing that wives ask for. And I think that all dudes, husbands, um, dads would say that prayer is obviously something that we know we should be doing, um, that we want to be doing. We don't know why it seems to paralyze us. Um, But most men actually don't pray with their family. They don't pray with their wife and they don't pray with their kids. Um, And I know for for some guys, the reason they don't is some guys just feel awkward. Like they've never done that. They've known their wife a long time. They've never even really heard them pray out loud. Um, and so it can just feel like clunky and awkward. And there's, that's kind of a side of you maybe that your wife has never seen. And so it just feels awkward for some guys. They literally just don't know how they, they don't pray out loud. They don't pray out loud. Um, maybe you don't pray out loud, like in any kind of group setting. And it just, um, the thought of like kind of putting yourself out there for your wife and for your kids, it's just something you've never been taught to do. And you, you just literally don't know how to do it. Um, I've even heard some guys say that they're afraid to pray with their wife because if they ask like, hey, uh, how can I pray for you or what can I pray for you about, that it might bring up some things that they're not ready to deal with, which I thought is a really fascinating answer um, because it, it's true. Like you might ask your wife, hey, is there something that I can pray for you for? And she might bring up something you don't want to hear uh, and it might turn into like a, a thing in your marriage and, and you might have to deal with something that you've been trying to like push under the carpet uh, under the rug for a long time. So there's all kinds of reasons why I think us men don't pray with our wife and with our kids. But here's the, here's the thing. Like if you set all of that aside, uh, I think the real reason that you and I don't pray consistently with our wives and with our kids uh, is because at the heart of our lack of prayer is actually idolatry. And, um, I know even as I say that, that sounds really harsh. You're like, what the heck are you talking about, Jared? Like, I'm just afraid or I don't know how, or it's awkward, or I don't want to like deal with stuff like, but it's not idolatry. That's weird. Um, so let me explain what I mean by that. When I, when I say that, when I say that your, our lack of praying for our wives and for our kids is actually idolatry. Cause here's the truth. Many of us, um, we don't actually believe that we need God. And we're not desperate for him to show up. Um, and what I mean by that is as, as kind of men in America, if you're listening to this in the States um, or in the West, um, we, we kind of just know that we can work hard and or just use our money to provide for our family and fix our problems. And this is kind of a luxury that we subtly believe deeply in our heart that we don't even maybe know we believe But we, for most of us, believe to our core that we can actually fix almost any problem with money. Uh, And so if I just work hard enough or if I just figure out a way to make some money uh, or some resources or the internet, I can figure out a way to get through just about any problem. And so we aren't totally convinced in our core that we actually need God to show up. Um, And I know that that sounds harsh, like me just saying that. So let me like kind of put the proof of that, uh, how it's played out to be true and and prove itself to be true in my life. So there are a few times when you and I will actually get into a situation where we really do need God to show up. We find ourselves uh, praying more when our child is sick or when we lose a job or some kind of maybe you've dealt with like a, a major sickness, either with you or directly within your family or someone close to you. And all of a sudden you find yourself praying in ways that you hadn't prayed before, whether it's I need to get a job quickly because we don't have money to meet all of our needs and fix all our problems. Or uh, somebody's like when you see your child sick, like, man, how do you pray when your kids are sick? And there's just it's just the worst looking at your kids when they're sick. There's nothing you can do to fix it. You're out of control and you're just like desperate for somebody to help you. Right. Or maybe there's some kind of major crisis in your life and you find yourself praying this praying more in desperate situations actually reveals that deep in our heart. We live most of our lives believing that we don't need God. It's essentially to not pray is to silently declare that you are in more control of your situation than God is. 
So by our lack of prayer, we actually say to ourselves, I think I got this. Like, I think I can handle things on my own. I think I can provide for my family. I think I can work hard. I think I can get myself out of situations. And it's proof that we believe that because when we are in desperate situations where we recognize, holy crud, like I am out of control. I don't have any control over this situation. You start finding yourself praying more and more because you're desperate for God to show up is just proof that all the other times we don't feel like we're desperate for God to show up and we don't actually need him to make any kind of big move in our life. So uh, our lack of prayer really is is, is a silently declaring that we feel like we're in more control of our situation than God is. That's kind of the bottom line, which is um, what I mean when I say idolatry. It's that we believe at its core, that we are better gods or there's something that's a better God than God is. I don't need to pray to God because really I can take care of us or my job can take care of us or my retirement or my bank account or whatever I'm chasing after um, can, can kind of take care of our needs and bring me joy and give me satisfaction and identity. And that's what I mean by idolatry, idolatry at the heart of our lack of prayer, both personally and with our wife and with our kids is the idea that is the belief that I don't actually need God. There's something else that can be a better God for me than God himself. Now, the good news is uh, in that we aren't the only ones who seem to be confused by prayer. Um, the disciples actually straight up asked Jesus, how do we pray? <laughs> Which I'm so thankful that they did because um, if Jesus were here today, uh, walking around in flesh and blood again, I would ask him the same thing. Like, Jesus, how do, how do we pray? How do you want us to pray? Um, that would be a question that I'd want to ask him. But fortunately, the disciples straight up asked him, Jesus, how do we pray? And Jesus answered him. Listen to what he, what he says. And this is in Matthew. He says, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard by their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray, then, like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive forgive you. Now, here's what probably happened as I was reading that verse. You probably checked out uh, because you've heard it so many times. You've probably heard that passage of scripture so many times that you're like, yeah, I know what he's about to say. I'm going to check out what's crazy because there's so much power in this this short passage where Jesus prays. Number one, the first thing that should stick out to us, um, I could there, there's so much that we could, we could do a whole series of podcasts just on this chunk of scripture where Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. There's so much packed in there, but we won't do that. I won't even go verse by verse uh, and line by line of this prayer. But for the sake of us dads, I want to point out a few things. The first thing we should notice is that Jesus has no expectation of long, fancy prayers. Uh, And that should be good news to you. In fact, he straight up commands you to pray short prayers. Uh, and that that's good news. Like God has no expectation. We as Christians kind of subconsciously and unintentionally put on this expectation that we should be really eloquent in our prayers. We should be able to say all these fancy spiritual words and talk in ways that we don't normally talk in real life. And we hear pastors do that. We hear other people do that. And so it's really intimidating. And this is part of why it feels awkward because when we pray with our wife, we're like, I don't even know what to say. I feel weird. I don't really know how to pray or the right words to use. Listen, Jesus straight up says, Don't be like the Pharisees. Don't be like the Gentiles. They think there are many words that are going to be heard. Your your father already knows what you need. Pray in secret. Pray quickly. Uh, Not necessarily quickly, but pray pray like that. You can be concise in your prayers. You don't have to pray these fancy words for everyone to think it's super impressive or for your wife or kids to think you're super impressive. 
Just pray this. And and really the prayer that he gets a, gives us is a very short prayer. Like he straight up backs it up by what he commanded. He said, don't, don't be like them. Pray this. And his prayer is quick. It takes like 20 seconds to say the prayer that Jesus told us to pray. So that's the first thing. Notice that God has no expectation for you to have these long, fancy prayers. The second thing you should notice uh, is whose kingdom are we building? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, which just means holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Check this out. God calls us, Jesus calls us to pray that his kingdom would come. Whose kingdom are we building here on earth? It's it's God's kingdom, not ours. This is often why we find ourselves not praying. Because if we're honest, we're more concerned with building our own kingdom rather than building God's kingdom. That's just the truth. We find ourselves not praying because we really believe uh, that our kingdom is more important, not God's. And so Jesus tells his disciples, when you pray, remember, whose kingdom are you actually trying to build? You're trying to build God's kingdom. And this is the last thing that should stick out to you as a dad. Who is the one, who does Jesus say is the one giving us our daily bread? It's God, not us. Jesus points us back to the real provider. We aren't praying often as men because we don't actually feel like we need Jesus to give us our daily bread. For most of us, We've got our next week of meals planned out a week ahead of time, or at least we'll know like we have enough money in the bank account and enough food to take care of us for the next several meals. And Jesus is saying, listen, pray, number one, that you remember whose kingdom you're actually trying to build. And number two, don't forget who the one is that's actually providing for you and your family and those around you. It's God. It's the same God that takes care of the birds of the air. It's not you. Hey guys, I want to take a quick second to pause and tell you about our sponsor, Skylight Frame. If you're still stuck on f- trying to figure out what gift to get that special person in your life, please consider Skylight Frames. Skylight Frames is a photo frame that you can update instantly by email from anywhere. You can actually unbox it, set up the custom email through their website, email all the pictures that you want into the digital photo frame, pack it back up and gift it to that person that you love. That's what I did for my mom this Christmas. I got the frame out, set up her custom email address, loaded a bunch of photos of her and the grandkids, and that's her Christmas gift for this year. She's always asking me to send her pictures of the kids, and this is a really easy way for me to get pictures of her and her grandkids uh, instantly downloaded to the digital photo frame. Skylight Frame has a gorgeous 10-inch touch screen so you can swipe through photos with your finger and even tap to thank the person who sent the photo. One really cool thing is they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love the Skylight, they'll offer you a full refund. They wanted to make sure they hooked up the listeners of the Dad Tired Podcast. So now, as a special holiday offer, you can get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter code TIRED. That's right. To get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame, just go to skylightframe.com and enter code TIRED. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E.com, promo code TIRED. I also want to let you guys know that I'm going to be answering some really specific questions on prayer at the very end of this episode. So make sure you stick around to the very, very end to hear my answers and thoughts on those. All right. So here's the deal. Here's why praying for your family actually points them to a better God. Praying and praying often reminds us whose kingdom we're trying to build as a man and as a family. It reminds us who ultimately provides for a family. Um, The early Christians would have prayed this, the Lord's Prayer. They would have prayed it three times a day, often reminding themselves over and over of who God is, how holy he is, the kingdom that they're trying to build, who's providing for them, what's most important. All day, they would spend time reciting this short prayer. Um, And as an interesting side note, before the Lord's Prayer, before they would actually recite the Lord's Prayer three times a day, the Jewish believers would have prayed the Shema, um, three times a day. And, and the Shema is actually the verse that I taught uh, a couple weeks ago when I was talking about discipling your children as Jesus did. And it's that hero Israel, the Lord, your God is one. Um, love the Lord with all your God, all your heart, your soul, your mind and strength and teach these things to your children 
day after day when you sit and when you rise and when you eat, when you, that's the verse I should have quoted it more accurately for you, but that's Deuteronomy 6. Uh, that's the Shema that they would have prayed three times a day. And again, it was to remind them when they wake up and when they're in the middle of the day and as they go to bed. And then even in between all of that, that they're constantly reminding themselves over and over and over what's most important. So here's my challenge to you. My challenge is that you would begin uh, first to repent, uh, to just say to God, God, I'm sorry that I have convinced myself that I'm a better God or that there's something else in my life that's a better God than you are. And and so my challenge, my first challenge is just to just repent to God. We, every single one of us do this as humans, especially as men who really believe that like we can do, like we can fix problems uh, either with our hard work or with our money. So the first thing is to pr- repent. But the second thing is to begin to pray as men personally, that you would begin to pray often, um, not long, lengthy prayers, but just these short prayers that remind you that God is a better God than you. And as you get into a rhythm of praying and you begin, you, you'll, you'll start to pray with your wife and kids. The truth is the reason you and I are not praying with our wife and with our kids often is because you and I are not praying often ourselves. We are not totally convinced to our core that we need God. And so the first thing we need to do is to repent personally, just as men to say, God, I'm sorry that I've convinced myself that I'm a better God than you are. And two, get into a habit of personally praying. It feels awkward to pray with your wife and with your kids if you're not personally praying. Jesus said, go into a quiet place and pray and not pray pray these long, lengthy, super fancy, super spiritual prayers, but just pray to remind yourself that God is holy that it's his kingdom we're trying to build, not ours, that he's the one that provides for us, not our hard work, or our bank account. And so for us as men, we must get into this habit of praying often. And don't think of it just like the discipling your kids uh, in 30 second chunks. Don't think of it as like, oh, I need to wake up at five every day and pray at this time. Or, you know, I need to be really structured. Man, just, just pray this short prayer. Even if you pray the Lord's prayer often, Just pray it as a reminder to you of who God is and who you are and how much you need God. Even if I've heard some guys say, well, I just feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over. That's okay. If you have to say the same thing over all the time, that's what the early Christians would have done. They literally would have said this prayer over and over and over. And it's not that you would repeat the prayer word for word that matters. It's the heartbeat behind it that matters. And it's that God, you are the one whose kingdom we're trying to build here. You are God. You are the Holy One. You are the one that provides for us. You are the forgiver of our sins. So when we get into that rhythm of just reminding ourselves over and over, if you if you find yourself repeating the same things, that's okay. It's okay to pray the same thing all the time as long as your heart is con- continually convinced and reminded of who God is and how much you need him. Praying with your family will point them to a better God. Praying will remind your kids and remind your wife that stuff isn't a good God, that money isn't a good God, that your job isn't a good God, that presents during Christmas aren't a good God, they can't satisfy, that you as a their dad aren't a good God and mommy isn't a good God and even your relationships with each other aren't a good God. Nothing is a good God except God himself. Praying reminds my kids over and over that there's actually one whose kingdom we're trying to build. There's one who provides for our family. It's not daddy. There's a better God than daddy. There's a better God than Santa and Christmas and gifts and good behavior and money and bank accounts and toys and presents. There's a better God than all of that. And praying often with your wife and with your kids reminds your family that there's a better God. Even my awkward prayers remind me that I'm not a good God. So for those of you guys that say that just feels awkward and it feels clunky, praise God. You're weak, dude. Like you are a weak guy. You're not perfect. And even your clunky prayers remind you that you need somebody better than you to actually lead your family. And that's Jesus. Here's what's at stake if we don't pray. It's not just that we don't teach our kids a spiritual discipline. That's not the only thing that's at stake here. All of us know like, I should pray. I should pray for my kids. I should teach my kids how to pray. It's bigger than that. It's not just that we don't teach our kids a spiritual discipline. It's that we risk raising children who believe that they don't actually need God. That's what's at risk. 
It's not just that they skip out on some kind of spiritual discipline. It's that they, that we risk raising children who believe that they don't actually need God. So here's why we pray. It takes us off our own throne. Praying reminds us that hallowed is his name, not our name. Praying reminds us that despite how much we think we are in control, there is only one who provides our daily bread. There's one who provides for the birds of the air. There's one who wakes us up every morning. There's one who tells the sun when to get up and the moon when to set. There's one who controls the oceans and the birds and the wild beasts of the field. There's only one who's actually in control and it's not us. We don't need children who know how to pray long-winded, spiritual, churchy prayers. We need children who are radically dependent on the grace and the power of Jesus rather than themselves. And they will only learn that when daddy recognizes that he radically needs Jesus more than he needs his hard work or his money or anything else that he's trying to chase after to satisfy him. Brother, you need to chase after God, to humble yourselves and say, I am not a good God. I need a better God than me. And praying and praying often reminds us that it's his kingdom that we're building, not ours. That it's him that provides for us, not our hard work and not ourselves. When we get that to our core and we begin to pray often, we can go to our wife and we can go to our kids and we can pray with them and help them to remember that there's a better God. Praying points our family to a better God. So brothers, my encouragement to you is that you'd humble yourself, that you'd pray often, that you'd remind yourself and you would remind your family every day that our mission as a family is to see God's kingdom come, not ours, And that we look to him, not ourselves, as our provider. Praying reminds us that all other gods we are chasing will fall short. They will fail us. Praying points our family to a better God. Hey guys, hope that episode was helpful for you as you begin to pray for your wife. I'm going to take just a couple minutes on the backside of this episode right now and talk about, uh, answer some specific questions that you guys actually sent regarding prayer um, on Instagram. So I'll take a few minutes to do that. Uh, If this episode was helpful for you, if you end up bailing out now, thanks for listening. Uh, Make sure to leave a review, subscribe on iTunes. Um, But let's dive into some of the specific questions that you had over on Instagram. All right, so um, yeah, I'll just fly through some of these questions that you had over on Instagram, try to answer them really specifically. So uh, somebody said, I know there is no only time to pray, um, but when, but with young kids, when do you find is a good time? So I try to pray as often as I can. Like the other day, to give you an example, I was um, trying to get ready to take them somewhere. I think it was to swim lessons, and I was just super flustered. I could feel myself getting flustered because they were not getting ready and we were late. <clears throat> they hadn't eaten and they weren't putting their shoes on. And I was like, just getting, I could feel my like anxiety overwhelming me. Uh, and so I literally just stopped, like stopped right in the middle of the living room. I, I leaned against the couch and I said, God, would you give me patience? And would you help uh, me reflect to you in this moment and kind of take away my anxiety? It was like 12 seconds. Uh, it was right in front of the kids. I didn't even say anything to them about it. And then I just kept going. And I know they saw it and heard it. They, there's no way they couldn't have heard it. Um, so I'm always trying to just like pray. I pray in the car when somebody cuts me off, like, God, Lord Jesus, give me some patience here. Don't let me do anything dumb in front of my kids. Uh, help me to forgive the way that you'd forgive those kinds of things. So I'm, I, I'm trying to like constantly just like give really short prayers because I'm actually, I'm not just doing that for a show. I really am trying to like pray and ask God that he would um, help me in those moments. And I want to model for my kids that we need God, that we are desperate for God to show up even in the little things. Um, But then we also do like really kind of quote unquote routine prayers where I pray for the kids uh, at night before bed and ask them to pray. And I'll talk more about that later because some of you guys ask questions about that. Um, And then we pray before meals and things like that. So we have some kind of some of the traditional times um, that you would think about praying, but also just trying to be really spontaneous and praying throughout the day. Um, somebody talked about like, how do you use toddler kid friendly language? Um, you, you just, you talk to them or you pray the same way that you would talk to your kids. So when I'm praying 
with my kids. I usually say things like, God, you're a good daddy. Thank you for taking care of us today. Um, thank you for making sure that we had food to eat and a house over our head. And God, we pray that your kingdom, that pieces of heaven would come to our neighborhood, so our, our friends, and we pray really specifically for our friends um, that are in our lives, on our street and in our neighborhood and our neighbors, and we just mention them by name and um, use it in language that makes sense for them. How do you renew prayer in your life so often it can feel stale individually and with spouse? Um, I think it's just a matter of coming back. Hopefully you listened to this episode and you caught that um, you kind of ask yourself, like, what, what am I really believing in my heart? Am I believing that I don't actually need God? And oftentimes, even when I'm in seasons of kind of like, quote unquote, for lack of churchy words, uh, dry seasons in my faith, a lot of times I will ask God, will you capture my heart again? Lord, I don't feel close. My emotions aren't there, but Lord, I pray that you would capture my heart, that you would give me a heart and passion for your word and for your, the, your mission and your kingdom. And, um, and I, I think that God likes to answer those prayers more than he likes to answer, will you get me a new car or a new house or more money? Um, because I think it makes more sense with his will. And God said that he would answer your prayers. Uh, he would give you all that you ask for according to his will. Um, some people take that verse out of context and say that God will give you whatever you ask for. He said he'll give you whatever he, you ask for according to his will. And I think his will is that you would fall in love with him and that you'd fall and that you'd love other people really well. <clears throat> That's clear in scripture. And so um, when you pray prayers like that, I think God is just anxious to um, answer them. Excited about answering them, I should say. Um Somebody asked, how to avoid becoming routine, ritualistic? I, I don't know if that's a bad thing. So again, hopefully you listen to this episode. I think routine is good. Uh, the Jewish people would have prayed the same prayer, the Shema, over and over and over again throughout the day. And then the early Christians would have prayed the Lord's Prayer multiple times throughout the day. Um, the the bummer part is, is when we start to pray things so often or say things so often that we lose its meaning. So I don't think that the routine is bad and to say the same things over and over is bad as long as it's reminding our hearts over and over of what we're actually praying and that that's that God's kingdom would come and that his will would be done in our lives and in our hearts and our neighborhoods and that we trust him as our provider and the one that forgives us for our sins. Um, what do you do when your child doesn't want to pray, but wants you to say the prayers? I think that's fine. Um, Literally up until I've been praying with and for my kids every moment since before they were even born. Uh, I've been praying for them consistently. And it wasn't until literally the last couple months that my kids started to want to pray. Uh, my oldest is seven. Uh, my youngest was two weeks old, <clears throat> but Eden's five. And just this year, um, within the last couple months, have they wanted to start praying. So don't make them pray. Ask them. I ask them every night, do you want to pray? Is there anything you want to say to God? And then I often encourage them, hey, you don't have to pray out loud, but just pray in your hearts, baby. Like pray when you're sleeping, pray when you're in the car, pray when you're frustrated. Whenever they bring up a situation to me, I ask them, did you pray about it? Did you talk to God about it? Um, and so that's okay. Just give them time. We take time and uh, I'd, I'd give them as much time as they need to, to pray out loud. Um, Somebody asked the correct way to pray. I don't know if there's a correct way to pray. I mean, is there is there a right way to talk to your um, dad or to your mom? You know, like I, um, I think it's just highly relational. God knows what you need before you need before you ask it. I think part of prayer is one um, recognizing who we are and who He is, and reminding ourselves of that, and then just being in relationship with a Father that loves us deeply. So I'd worry less about is there a right way. Uh, somebody asked, as a new believer, but your wife, a longtime believer, how do you start and also be the leader with your kids? Hopefully, again, this episode was helpful in that um, you don't need to have any pressure of praying long, fancy prayers. Um, I think that it's okay to pray simple, really simple prayers in your language. And I think your wife, especially if she's a longtime believer, will respect you so much and love you so much and be really proud of you that you're stepping out in faith and just praying uh, with her and out loud. So um, don't feel the unnecessary pressure of of what the Pharisees and the hypocrites did for these long, fancy prayers. Just pray, man. Um, another person asked, how do we keep prayer from becoming the same man day in, day in and day out? Again, I, I, I think if the heart is right, it's okay to be routine. My, my daughter prays the same prayer. 
uh, every time. And uh, I don't mind that. I don't mind. Sometimes I'll encourage her like, hey, do you want to pray about this? And either she does or she doesn't. That's okay. Uh, I think the routine is okay. Again, all the Christians that went before us prayed routine prayers all the time. As long as your heart is connected to what you're saying, routine isn't bad. It reminds you over and over and over again um, what who God is and, and who you are. Uh, a lot of you guys asked, by the way, how to make how to not make prayers monotonous and repetitive. I, I think that's okay. Just continue to ask God, would this be true of my heart? Maybe that's the way you start those prayers is that God, would this be true of my heart? Um, as you pray those same prayers over and over. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all the questions that you asked. Some of you guys asked the same question. So I think I answered it here. Um, again, hope this episode was helpful. Come over to Instagram, shoot me a message and you know, shoot me a direct message. I'm going to post uh, a post on prayer this week over on Instagram. So I'd love to just hear in the comments what you guys think of that. Um, you can probably hear my newborn baby crying in the background. So I'm going to go help my wife out with that. I love you guys. Thanks for listening. Talk to you later.